Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video. Another video where I've bought something 40 off eBay and I'm going to do my best to fix it. Now, I bought three of these for £28. They were £16 plus £12 postage because they weigh... Ugh, they weigh a lot. So obviously postage is going to be expensive. Now, I've already done one of them. I'm not going to tell you the outcome because you might want to watch that yourself. But this is the second one that I've done. I've just taken this straight out of the box. It just had bubble wrap around it. I haven't plugged it in. Haven't done anything with it. Haven't even properly looked around it. But I did notice when I pulled it out that it's got four USB ports here. And I believe the ones with four USB ports also play PlayStation 2 games. So all PlayStation 3s play PlayStation 1 games, but some of them play PlayStation 2. The, uh, the original fat ones with the four ports, but I believe that some of them play all games and some play some games. Now I've had a look at the uh, serial number at the back and I think it said on this one that you may run into problems. So if you have a look there, it's C E C H O three. So this might be one of the ones that just play, I don't know whether it's most of them or whether it's half of them, I haven't got a clue, but in theory, if I can get this one working, it should be able to play PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and play games, which is absolutely amazing. Now, when I put it out of the box, I noticed that this thing here lifts up, which it didn't do on the first one that I fixed. So, that's kind of interesting to me. You've got a, a SD card slot in there. It says Pro and CF as well. So, would that be for... Would that be for the memory cards for the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2? Not too sure. But, uh, yeah, so basically all three were supposedly faulty, and it says on them that they turn on, but they don't display on the TV. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to plug it in and see what's happening. Now, with this, no cables were issued with this at all. It was purely the PlayStation on its own. So I've had to use my own cables. So let's plug it in there. I'm going to plug in my USB cable here so this controller can sync up. Now, actually, before I do that, let me show you around the place. So there's a lot of dust, but the ports themselves look to be look to be okay. And it has it said the seals are intact, and if you look up there, that seal does appear to be intact. So it's always easier to fix something if the seals are intact, because it means that hopefully you're the first person in there. Right, let's try via HDMI to begin with, and then we can plug in the AV cable if the HDMI cable doesn't work. So let's turn on our TV, make sure we're on the correct source. Yeah, HDMI 1. Okay, so let's turn it on at the back. Little red light here, which is good. So let's turn it on. It's gone to green. I can hear the fan. And something's happening on the TV here. Right, it says 57p at 50 hertz. So this must have been last connected up to the AV cable. So let's see if we get display. No, so we're not getting anything there. But that could be because we've got a HMI cable plugged in. So let's let's plug in the AV cable into it and see if that works. So let's turn this around take out that. I've already got an AV cable plugged into the TV here, so let's plug that into the back here. There. Now let's see if that gives us a display. Input AV. No, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely shut it down. I'm going to leave the AV cable in there and then uh, we'll try the AV cable and then we'll do the same process again with the HDMI cable. doesn't look like the controller is doing anything but maybe it needs to fully turn on before this will sync up. So here we go. We're going to hold down the power button and I'm going to keep my finger on it. Right, that's not, not doing anything. Right, okay, it's not letting me turn off fire here. Well, let's turn it off at the back. And I'm going to turn it on again. But this time it's connected to the AV. Right, 
Right, okay, I can see it's pixelated. Look at that. Can you see there's loads of little, it looks like stars everywhere. But I definitely heard it, and you would have heard it as well. Let's see now if this is going to sync up. Yes, it is. So it's working, it's just not displaying. And I know my cable works because it works on, uh, on the last one. Yeah, okay. Right, well, let's see now if we can get some sort of picture with the HMI cable because I'm thinking, would it be two separate, would it be one chip for AV and a different chip for HDMI, so would they both be faulty, or maybe there's one video chip that does both of them. I'm not sure. But anyway, we can't get anything there. Weird thing is, I don't know why it's not letting me shut down. Oh, it is. There we go. That's, that's flashing green. Right, okay, so that's turned itself off. Now let's go back into the HDMI. And this time I'm going to hold it down. Maybe I should just turn it on. I'll try to just turn it on to begin with and then I can hold down the button. Actually, we've already done it, haven't we, and it didn't work. So let's hold down the button. Would help if we put it on the correct one on the TV. Right, it's still coming up as 57P. And again, I can see it's all pixelated. So it's trying, and that is via HDMI, because obviously the AV is not connected. So, I mean, I've seen, have I seen that before? I think that is, I'm trying to think if I've seen pixelated, yeah I did didn't I on an Xbox wasn't it? And it was the HDMI chip itself, you know the little IC chip that controls the port. I'm going to turn it off. Right that's now off. I'm going to hold it down this time. Yeah, okay. Well, it's come back on, but again, it's pixelated. Let's just see if this controller's working. No, so it's not syncing up. Oh, yes, it is. It is syncing up. Right, okay, so there's definitely a display problem here. So, uh, I know my cable's all good. I know the TV's good. So it looks like we have to take this apart and see if we can see, see what's happening with it. Uh... Yeah, because the last time, well, I don't want to give away the last video, but uh, with it, when it was in via HDMI, it it did uh, it gave me the option to swap over to it. While here, it's not coming up with the option at all, so it definitely looks like there is a display problem. So I'm just going to fast forward through this. I'm just going to try it one more time by holding it down for ages and then holding it down again while putting it back on just to see what happens. No, it's still exactly the same problem. I'm just going to try a disc. Yeah, well, it's taken it, I think. Yeah, I can, f I can feel it spinning. Well, 
Oh, so that appears to be okay. So it looks like it is just a display problem. So what we need to do is we need to take this thing apart and then see if we can get our head around what's happening. So next time you see this now, it's going to be on the mat, ready to dismantle. Well, just before taking this apart, I'm just going to run it through a HDMI switch, just in case there's some issue with the handshake, just in case there's some, some you know, HDCP type issue. I'm sure it's not going to be, but I thought it would be worth, uh, worth a try. So I'm just turning it on here. So we've got input 4 lighting up here, so it's definitely recognising it as an input. But we've got the same the same output up there, so it's not making any difference. But it was worth a try, just in case. Right, let's get this thing apart then. Right, so I'm going to be fast forwarding through the taking apart. So I believe I'm going to start here with this little sticker. And there's going to be a little screw underneath here. Actually, do you know, before I do that, maybe I should start with the, the hard drive, just in case there is some issue with the hard drive. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Looking forward to seeing the inside of this, because I think it's going to be a really well-made console. Ah, oh, there's no hard drive in it. Okay, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, the, the listing did say that it's got a hard drive, uh, they all have hard drives, but clearly this one didn't. Now, I don't know anything about PlayStations, but maybe that's why it's not displaying. I know with the Xbox it will display, and it will tell you that there's an, an error, but maybe this is why this one's not displaying. So obviously, first things first is, let's pop a hard drive in there. Now, I'm going to use the one from my the, the first one because remember I've got three of these and I've already uh, done one of them so I'm going to use the hard drive off that one there I don't know whether they are interchangeable or not but let's see if it brings up some sort of different error and then we can go from there I'm just going to undo these screws here at the side now thinking about it I'm certain that I've seen on PlayStation that there's a thing that you can like rebuild database or something like that so I'm sure even without a hard drive that it would still display something on the screen that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking and especially the fact that there's pixels on it that says to me that it is actually an error with the you know for example the HMI chip the thing that's confusing me is is the fact it's not working on AV. So I'm thinking that this might actually be a major problem, possibly something that's unfixable. So I don't know on these ones if they have a combined CPU and GPU, like a graphics processing unit, if that's what it's called, I think that's what it stands for. And so if this one has separate ones, then maybe the GPU has failed because when I turn it on, the controller definitely syncs up and everything. I can, I can hear a little bit of movement when I go left and right on this uh, on the controller, so that says to me that the the CPU might well be okay. I'm wondering because they're both faulty whether it's going to be an issue with the with the GPU. That's if they're a separate one. I'm just going to put just a couple of screws in here just to make sure that it doesn't you know go in wonky or anything. Right, let's try this again. Now I'm not going to rearrange the camera, you're just going to have to take my word for it that it's either working or not working. You'll be able to tell by my voice anyway whether it's, uh, whether it's successful. Right, okay, so as you can see we've got a light here, so it still syncs up just like before. It did make a startup sound but it's not working on AV or HDMI. I've still just got the pixelation between both of them. When I hold this down here, the, the button on and off to swap the uh, you know the input over to AV, then the pixelation then occurs, for example, on AV. So I think it's all working. It's just the fact that it's not displaying on the screen. So obviously it's absolutely redundant as it is. So what's happened is the display must have gone. It was probably not repairable for whatever reason. And then, or maybe it was just sold on as faulty and then maybe the original owner took the hard drive out of it for security. So I'm going to pop that hard drive back away from it now and then we're going to concentrate on taking this thing apart.
hoover over this. Again, you shouldn't hoover electronics, but there's so much dust in here, and I don't want to breathe it all in. Now the very fact that there's two of these clamps makes me think that there's going to be two main chips, one GPU and one CPU, and I'm worried now that this GPU chip is going to be the one that's at fault. And if it's going to be one of those BGA chips, you know, ball grid array where it's got all the solder underneath it, so it's like a chip with loads of dots of solder underneath, loads of connections, then I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. Excellent. Right. So it was nice taking something apart for the first time. Absolutely filthy. Oh, it's making me sneeze. Uh, let me hoover this out. Wrong, but I thought I heard something go up the hoover. Now I didn't see anything loose in here. Maybe it was just a bit of broken plastic or something, but something sounded like it rattled up the hoover. Wow, look at the size of that fan and all the heat sinks and everything. Looks like it's really nicely made. Looks like the paste has gone all dry. We're getting there bit by bit, so a few more screws to undo, and then hopefully we'll be able to take this off. Right, I'm just going to try to get the dust off this, and then we'll have a look and see what's going on. So we've got the board out now so we can look at it in closer detail. So I'm going to be working back from the HDMI port and also the AV port to see if I can see anything that's linked to both of them, like if there's any particular chip that's linked to these two here. Now, as I keep saying in the video, do not copy me. Do not be hoovering the board. I know that, fully aware of that. It's just that it was covered in dust and I chose to do it. But I know that the static from the hoover can cause damage to the chips. Right, okay, so, uh, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my multimeter out, see if I can see anything obvious. I mean, just from a quick look around the place, it all looks pretty good, but obviously I've got a lot to study. And uh, once I find out any more info, I will then get back to the video and let you know what I found. Quite nice on this one, the HDMI port and the AV port are actually through the board. No, they're not kind of like surface mount, they are actually through the board. So I'm going to get a ground and I'm going to see if a lot of these are shorted. So I'm just using continuity and I'm going to be going across different pins. Some of them are definitely shortening the HDMI but then some of them are ground anyway. So. I'm going to get my little HMI plug, plug it in and see if it makes more sense. So I'm just going to be using this replacement plug for the end of a HMI cable. And the good thing is I've got loads of screw terminals so it makes it very easy for me to test. So I'm going to plug this in and then I can test what pins are what. And they're all labelled up at the back here you see. So let me zoom in. Now I've also got a bit of uh, a bit of paper here with the printout. Of what they are. So for exa example, eleven should be grounds. Let me just get all the let me get all the grounds. Right, so number two should be grounds. It is five. Yep. Yeah. 
8, 11, and I'm just grounding this one obviously. So for example, it'd be the same as me touching this one here. So look, 11, and then we've got 17. Right, so but all the others shouldn't be ground apart from, I think, is it 20? Yeah. So let me go across the others now. One, fine, four, six, seven, eight is supposed to be ground, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 is, yes, yeah, 17 shield, yeah. Okay, so they're not shorting out, so that says to me that the HDMI port is okay unless there's a problem with actually the, uh, the connection. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna go from these screw terminals to here, and that's gonna prove whether or not the HDMI port is okay. So we know that when I plug it in here, there's no, it's, it's not grounding itself. So let me just see what's happening here. Four doesn't seem to be working. Maybe they go up to this next one up here. Oh, it does, it goes up to here. Right, okay. opinion the HDMI port is absolutely fine I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all so I'm now going to be tracing the wires along I haven't got anything to test the AV cable I mean I could the AV port I could get the AV cable so I'm gonna have a spare one somewhere cut it and then I can test the wires along but because we've got a problem with HDMI and AV I think I'm going to concentrate on this for the moment and just work my way along to see where if I can work out where it goes to you know before this so uh, I'm not going to film it but when I find out of course I will start filming right so I've spent about 10 or 15 minutes looking at it and I think I might have found something I'm not too sure but it doesn't quite look right to me so to begin with I was working from this HDMI port and there's a chip very near it so the HDMI chip the IC chip feeding the port normally should be I presume close to it because what's the point of having it far away now when I started peeling this thing off here which I don't know if it's a thermal pad or some kind of thing to put pressure on it it didn't come off nicely anyway it came off in bits but if you have a look there's a chip underneath it and we've got four little rectangle things here now I recognize these from the PlayStation 4 and also the Xbox one and what they are are there's some kind of thing that goes I don't know whether there's some sort of filter that goes after the IC chip before the HDMI port and they look exactly the same and basically if these are shorted it could indicate a problem with either these or the chip but I've got this on continuity and all of these are tested absolutely perfectly so basically there's four points to them one at each corner and these two corners should short together and these two corners should short together but they shouldn't short across across themselves if that makes sense now I've gone on all of them and they're all basically testing absolutely fine so that says to me that this chip is okay because from memory if the chip was shorted out I'm sure some of these were also shorted I think that's what the problem was from memory that some of them were shorted when they shouldn't have been so everything around here looks to be okay so now let me flip the board over now we have got the two massive chips here do you know the ones that had the clamps on them one says rsx i'm not sure what that means but i need to uh, i need to google that you can just see i haven't cleaned them up here but it says rsx and the other one says cell broadband 
engine, I think it says, something like that. Again, I haven't cleaned them up. So I need to find out what these two do. But if you have a look, and you see, it looks like they're linked to each other because we have tracks going from here to here. Now, let me flip it over. And you can see on the other side, we have loads of what I presume are tiny little resistors. Now, this is the bad thing. Let me go on to some other, sorry, not resistors, capacitors. Now, let me go on to some other capacitors. So, for example, if I was to go onto a capacitor near the HDMI ports, let me just move all this out of the way so nothing shorts out. Okay, so if I put one leg to ground, and then, for example, if I was to go across some random ones around the place, so if you have a listen... One side will sometimes just give a little beat, but then nothing, and then the other side will have continuity. There, nothing, nothing. So you can see one leg is normally, uh, I'm going out of the picture now, but there, there, okay, well, they're both shorted. Okay, but that's because we're getting closer to this. Let me come more away here. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, you get the idea. Yeah? But now, watch this. Hold on. Yeah, here's okay. But now, everything, everything between here and here is shorted. I mean, even if I just do this, watch. You ready? Sorry, let me get it in, in picture. Right, so everything between here and here is shorted. Look. Everything. Doesn't matter what I touch. Even in here, look, everything. So surely that this shouldn't all be ground. So what I'm thinking is, because it doesn't matter what I go on, everything around this area, well not these, these are, these are okay. Yeah, these are okay, but everything around here, see? Now, I'm thinking not everything should be grounded. So that says to me, see, I was worried when both the HDMI and the AV port weren't working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Google what this RSX chip is and also what this cell broadband engine is because maybe one of them might be for the PS2. You know, the uh, because in a way, this has got kind of two because the PS2 always did play PlayStation 1 games. So in a way, this console's two consoles in one. You've got PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. So if, for example, this is the graphics chip, then I'm wondering if this is faulty. And if you have a look here, you can see this is one of those ball grid array chips. So what happens is there's loads of little solder. There's loads of little solder balls underneath here that stick to the actual board and if for example just one of them have shorted then it will probably bring everything else to to ground as well so I'm going to google exactly what these are right okay so I've been looking up online and basically this chip here is the GPU this is the one responsible for the graphics and this one here is the CPU now apparently what I've got is called the GLOD the green light of death and it's a very common problem. Remember I said that these original ones were plagued with problems? Well, this is one of the problems. So, apparently this thing here can cause many things, like the yellow light of death, I believe, and the whatever it is, is it red light of death? I'm getting mixed up there between Xbox and PlayStation. But anyway, I'm not concerned about them because I've got the green light of death, which is where nothing is displayed on the screen. Now, remember originally I thought that there might be something wrong with a chip because it was the AV and also the HDMI that was faulty. Now, you've seen that I did all my testing. Well, no, you didn't see I do all my testing. I did very little testing. But you've seen that everything around here was shorted, everything. So that leads me to believe that possibly it's this chip here, the graphics one, the RSX, that is faulty. I don't know that. I'm just assuming that going by what people are talking about online and a little bit of testing that I've done here. Although my testing might not be correct really what I should probably do is take apart my work in PlayStation 3 and see if everything is shorted if it is maybe it indicates that that's not the problem but I think here I am willing to take the risk now what a lot of people do to get it working is a reflow which is basically where you use for example hot air and then you melt the solder ball so underneath here what we have is if you can imagine I haven't got a pen with me but if you can imagine we've got a chip and then instead of having the 
legs on the outside. So each one of these are contacts around the outside. With these ones, all the contacts are underneath and it's called a BGA, a ball grid array, because it's a chip. And it will have like tens or hundreds of little solder contacts all the way underneath. And each of them is a tiny little solder ball. Now what can happen is, some of these can lift or some of these can crack. And if you remember watching my uh, PlayStation Portable Go, the one that I uh, try to fix for Tex, you might remember that when I pressed down on the chip, it started to work. Now, in it, that instance, something like a reflow would probably actually work good. The problem is, if you want to reflow it properly, then you do need specialist equipment. You need to basically heat up the board completely, and then you need to ramp it up to a certain temperature, leave it there for a while, I think it's called a profile or something, and then let it cool down. Obviously, I haven't got any of that equipment. But loads of people are saying that a reflow works or a reball works. So a reball is where you take the chip off, clean all the uh, solder away from it, and then put fresh balls of solder on it and then put it back on. But in this instance here, is that going to work? Because if it was a case of putting pressure on the chip, so for example, if I just had to tighten up these to put more pressure on, and then it would work, I would say, yes, it's got cracked solder balls. But here, it looks to me as if everything is shorted. So I think it is the chip itself that's to blame, rather than the actual connections underneath. So I don't think a reflow or a reball is going to make any bit of difference if the chip itself is to blame. So I dug a little bit deeper, and I found a really good video by Lewis Rosman. Anybody that watches my channel, will probably watch his as well because obviously he's the kind of like uh, the daddy when it comes to repair and stuff like this and he did a video called reboarding flip chip gpus is bull you can guess what the next word is if you watch his videos so basically i watched that it's about 18 minutes long and it was really interesting and he reckons in 99 percent of cases when a gpu fails a reboard or a reflow is only going to work temporarily because the problem is the chip and not the solder itself. So what he said to do is heat it up, to prove it, heat it up to a temperature where solder doesn't melt. And a lot of the times it will start working, but it will fail again. So it's not worth doing, but I'm gonna do it purely to see whether it does work or not. So basically he said, if you were to heat this to 130, between maybe 130 or 120 and 150 degrees C Celsius, then that is not hot enough for the solder to melt because lead-free solder on average will melt at 217 degrees C. That's what he said. Obviously it will vary a little bit, but that's the average. So if I was only to heat this up to maybe 150 and then see what happens, then if it starts working, we then know that it is to do with the failing chip. Now, Maybe the solder balls underneath have shorted together between a ground and one of the other ones, and in which case then it might be throwing the shorts everywhere. So that could be an option, but either way, is a reball going to work if two of the bits of solder have stopped? Sorry, not reball, a reflow. Is heating this up going to work if two of the bits have just, if they've bridged, if, if one, two, or three of the balls have bridged together, is a reflow going to work? Probably not. That would probably need to be reboard. So I think what I'm going to do in this instance is, as far as I'm concerned, this is now a dead board. It's only going to be good for spares, which is a real shame because this is a backwards compatible one and it would be nice to have a backwards compatible. But remember, I've got one more of these and I haven't unpacked that one. So that might be a backward compatible one and that might be one of the even earlier models, that other model number that does all of the PlayStation 2 games. So I might be lucky with that one. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to heat this up to, let's call it, 140 degrees C and then well actually no what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to de-lid it because this uh, the chip is actually underneath here I, I think there's some chips in the corner and then one in the middle so I'm going to de-lid it I'm going to take the lid off so I'm going to heat it up enough to get the lid off I'm not going to use flux or anything because it's only held on I think with thermal paste so I'm going to pop the lid off and then I'm going to heat it up uh, for around uh, five minutes at 140 degrees C and then we're going to put it back together and so well, put thermal paste on, put it back together and see if it works. If it works, 100% I know the chip is faulty and it will fail again. It might last a day, it might last a week, a month, six months. It's going to depend on uh, how much it's used. 
And as well, what some people do is they put the custom firmware on here and then they set it so that it will never let the chip get above 80 degrees C, which is quite a good idea. Uh, so, you know, that is an option, but I don't understand that at all. I've never done it. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to see if it works. If it works, fantastic. I'll just leave it at that. If it doesn't work, then I'm going to blast the hell out of this chip to take it off just to see if the short goes. So this board to me is scrap anyway, so I want to use it as a learning curve. Then if I take this off and the short goes, I know the problem was this chip. If the short is still there, I'm then going to take off this chip and see if the short goes. Might even go further and do some of the others because to me, it's kind of scrap anyway. Now I know if you're a professional and you know that you can fix this, you're going to hate me saying that this board is scrap because you would be able to fix it. But I am not going to pay a professional £150 or whatever it costs because I can buy a working one of these from CEX in the UK. I haven't looked it up recently. I think before they were around £60 and that will come with a two-year guarantee. So obviously I'm not sentimental with this particular one and I'm not going to spend the fortune fixing it when I can get a, another one with a two-year guarantee for approximately £60. So that's my thinking behind it and that's what we're going to do and we're going to see what happens so like i say i don't know that this is at fault but to me everything points to this so let's get the hot air on this i'm not going to use any flux just yet yeah it's coming there we go excellent right So you can see the thermal paste on each of the corners and this is the chip in the middle. So I don't know what the corner ones are, whether they would be RAM or something, I'm not too sure. But this is the chip in the middle. So this is the one we're going to clean up and then we're going to heat it up for five minutes and we'll see what happens. I don't know whether I should be heating up the outer ones as well. Well, when I move it around, maybe I'll heat a bit of everything, but it must be the chip in the middle, which is... Uh, which is causing the problems. There you go, and that's, the, that's that bit there. So let's get some IPA and clean this all up. Samsung on them, so maybe there's some sort of memory or something, I don't know. So there you go, you can see it now. So it's the one in the middle we're going to be heating up. It's really hard to get these clean, really, really hard. It's just like rock, the stuff on it is just rock hard. So I could be a bit more rough on this side because it's just metal. Unless, do you know what it could be? I just read that it was thermal paste. I'm thinking that the middle's thermal paste and I reckon maybe the edge ones were glued because it really is very hard. Yeah, I'm sure that's not thermal paste actually. mention is that you can buy these chips from Hong Kong and also China for £18.75 so not a huge amount of money but again you're going to have to be able to reball it aren't you and, and uh, apparently they come with the balls already on them but you're still going to need the specialist equipment to put it on there. I did watch a YouTube video of a German guy who managed just to do it with a heat gun so you never know that might be that might be a fun video I could maybe get that and uh, see if it can be done with just uh, just the hot air, you know, like a sort of ghetto way of doing it. Right, I'm scratching this up really bad, but I want all this glue off it, or thermal paste, whatever it is. Scratched very badly, but most of it, nearly all of it, is off. So hopefully when I put thermal paste all over it, it will be okay. Right, so with this bit here, again, I'm not going to use flux because I'm just I'm just heating it up. So I'm going to get a timer and I'm going to time it for five minutes, I think. Give it a go at five minutes and see what happens. Right, so here we go. Now, again, I'm just going to be fast forwarding through it, but all I'm going to be doing is I've got a 140 C, that's Celsius. I've got the airflow up full and I'm going to be holding it, uh, I don't really know, maybe about five centimetres above it and I'm just going to be moving around. So I'm going to do this for five minutes. 
I'm hoping it's not going to be hot, too hot to damage the chip. I think at 140 I should be okay. Right, so I'm going to start timing five minutes. What Lewis Rossman said is the reason why reballing and reflowing people think it works is because in the process of doing the reflow or the reball, they're heating up the chip. So it's not actually the melting of the solder that's fixing it, it's the heating up, up of the chip that's realigning it to make it work again. But the chip is still a failing chip and it will fail again. So obviously the reball and reflow can work if the chip is loose. So for example, if the board's been bent and there's a couple of cracked solder boards, balls on it, then the, uh, the reflow or a reball would work. But the majority of cases that's not the, the, the problem. The problem is the GPU, the graphics chip, this thing in the middle which is failing because it's been heated up and cooled, heated up and cooled, heated up and cooled constantly and the cooling on this isn't adequate and as well as that maybe the chip isn't a fantastic design in the first place. So that's the five minutes. So now I'm going to let it cool and then I'm going to put thermal paste on. This is the one that I'm using, this uh, Arctic MX2. And uh, I'm going to put it on here, 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 here. Pop the lid back on, put more thermal paste on top of the lid and this one here. And then we'll uh, put it back together and see what happens. So while I'm waiting for that to cool, I might as well try to clean off the thermal paste that's on the, the fan part of it, the heat sink part of it. So the thermal paste came off really easy on these two, it just came off with a bit of IPA and a wipe and it came off really easy on the chip so that makes me think now that in the four corners it wasn't thermal paste. I read something online about it being thermal paste but I don't think it was. I think the thermal paste is in the middle and I think these four here are actually glued in position. But before I put the thermal paste on I just want to see if everything is still shorting. Yeah, everything is. Uh, everything. Right, okay. Uh, oh, I'm not very hopeful. Thing is, though, I don't really know if that shorting's got anything to do with it. I think it probably has, but I, I don't really know that. Uh, I don't really want to waste a thermal paste on it if it's not going to do anything, but I think I might as well give it a go. Well, I'm going to put this back together, it's going to take quite a while and then we'll test it and then we'll take it apart again and get rid of the chip completely and see if that changes anything. But I'll put thermal paste on those bits as well so it will uh, go against the heat sinks on the fan. Okay, so I've got it plugged in. Remember, I've turned it on at the back, so I have actually got a red light there. Let's just get the TV onto the right input. Right, HDMI 1, that's good. Let's get the cable and plug it into the back. Right, here we go. Let's turn it on. No. Ah, same as before. Oh, that's so annoying. I thought, part of me thought that that might work. So many people do that on YouTube and it works. Ah. Okay, let's try the AV cable just, just to see, just out of curiosity. Right, nothing's happening there, I'm just going to do the old reset thing. No, 
no, just pixels everywhere again. Right, okay. I think rather than taking the chip off straight away, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to reheat it now. I'm going to put it all the way up to something like... I'm going to put it all the way up to... I'm going to put flux around it, put it all the way up to 300, just to, just to, just to see. You know, that way it might melt a bit of solder underneath. And, uh, well, look, you know, like the board's ruined anyway. I'm going to be taking that chip off. But I just want to give it one final chance before I completely take it off because maybe I didn't leave it on long enough at 140 maybe I should have left it on for 10 or 15 minutes but there's nothing there there's nothing happening with this as it is now so uh, yeah let's get this apart again I'm not going to film taking it apart again I'll just film when it comes to heating the chip one thing I did forget to try is putting the hard drive in so I'm just going to pop the hard drive in and uh, also I've got a disc in there as well no, same thing. Well, that hasn't made any difference. Let's take this thing apart again. So basically, if I even now, what I might end up doing by accident is the chip might pop, and then it's going to be completely uh, useless. But to be fair, it's useless at the moment anyway. As you can tell, I've got no confidence that this is going to work. And even though, but it's not even that. Even if I could get it to work, I know it's only a short-term thing. So if this GPU is faulty, then even by doing this it's not actually going to make it work long time it would just be nice to see it working again the thing that I'm still unsure about is whether 100% it is a fault in this GPU so for example now there's going to be people watching this that will 100% know what the fault is well near enough 100% and you see I would be absolutely gutted if it turned out that it was this HDMI chip because that's something that I could possibly do and uh, by me doing this I could end up ruining the board completely but then again it is a learning curve isn't it so if I don't do anything if I'm scared to do anything then I'm never gonna learn so for me remember I have spent 28 pound on three of them I'm not gonna tell you the outcome of the first one but I've still got another one to do after this so even if I just get one of them working it's still gonna be it's still gonna be worthwhile Right, I think I'm going to leave it at that now on top because I don't want to I don't want that chip to pop just yet and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to heat the underside of that board in the same position so I'm just going you know underneath the GPU okay so uh, I'm gonna let that cool and I'm gonna put it back together and I'll turn the camera on when I'm just about to turn the TV on Right, okay, this is interesting. I haven't put it back together yet, obviously, but look, look at this. So this is the GPU here, and do you remember it was shorting everywhere before? Well, now watch. No? Yes. Yes? Okay, so that one still is. No? Okay, that one is, hold on. No? Yes? No? Yes, and I'm sure these were all doing it before. Because before, when I run it across there, it didn't matter what I went on, it was doing it. Well, now it's not doing it on every one. Now, it's still doing it on most of them, but I didn't, I mean, I didn't go across every one. Look, that, that one's not. That one's not. That one's not. No. As far as I'm concerned, that's different than before, but yet on the CPU, it's still shorting everywhere. I mean, maybe they're both faulty, I don't know, but I'm, sh I'm pretty sure now that's not shorting as much as it was doing a little while ago so let's pop this back together right okay I definitely feel more hopeful this time let's turn the TV on plug in the HDMI cable 
and also the AV cable. Right, one HDMI one, I'm going to turn it on at the back. Red light again. Let's see if it works this time. Right, I haven't got the hard drive in, but I've seen on YouTube that if the hard drive's not in, it just says, it still comes up on the screen, but it says cannot start. Oh, that's even more worrying, it's not uh, coming up at all. You know, before it came up with the pixelation, now it's not doing anything. Let me go into AV just in case it's on that one. Oh no, it's not recognising it at all now. Ooh. I thought when the shorts went, well, when some of the shorts went, I thought that would have made a difference. Uh, okay, let's turn it off. Not let me turn off either. Right, okay, so I've definitely I've definitely made it worse, haven't I? No, it's not turn on or on or off now. I wonder whether the heat has somehow ruined the CPU. Uh, let me put the hard drive in just in case. Oh, okay, pixelation's back on AV. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I suppose we might as well take the chip out, see if it, see if it disappears. See if the, the, the short disappears. Yeah, it's still pixelated on both of them. And it's still just coming up at the bottom 5.7p at 50 hertz. Just a bit concerned why it's all shorting on that CPU as well. I wonder. I wonder would it be worth heating up the CPU at the same time as doing the GPU? Because I, I haven't done that yet, or am I just wasting my time? Thing is, though, is that going to prove anything? Is that going to prove anything? See, the main thing is, 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 is fault finding. I'm not going to be able to fix this. But if I take, if I heat up the CPU and the short goes and it starts working does that mean then that it was a CPU at fault or because I mean some of the shorts have gone now from the GPU haven't they see if I take off the GPU and there's still shorts there I know 100% then that it was uh, the CPU that's faulty as well I don't know and as well as that I don't want to spend hours upon hours upon hours on this because no matter what I do it's not going to be a lasting fix I think let's stick with the original plan. Let's take out that GPU. Right, so I'm going to strip this down yet again. It did actually work when I pressed my finger on it that time. I just had to press it really hard. I suppose not everything's lined up properly. So uh, I don't actually think I've made it worse. It looks to be the same as it was before. Okay, so now we're going to try to remove this GPU completely and then we'll see if the shorts disappear from elsewhere in the board because there's still a lot of shorts especially around this CPU and also there's still shorts around on this GPU as well. So what we'll do is we'll just see whether there's as many shorts once we remove it completely. So I'm going to go all the way up to 400 degrees C, I've got the airflow on full and I've put flux, this Amtec flux, all the way around the outside of this here. So let's see what let's see what happens. I'm not masking anything else off because as far as I'm concerned now this board is a donor board and I'll be able to use it because I definitely want to buy more of these in the future because I think it's just a lovely, really nice the way it all goes together and stuff. It is, you know, even though I can't get this working, it still has been really nice to work on it. So here we go.
Well, this isn't budging at all, so I'm going to go all the way up to the maximum heat that my hot air station does, and that's 480 degrees. So I'm up full now, 480 degrees C with full airflow. A bit more flux on it because this, this thing's not moving at all. I don't even think I'm going to be able to actually get this off. No, I'm going to have to give up on that, it's not budging at all. Right, just for the hell of it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat up the CPU and uh, see if that does anything. Fred, it's time to call it a day on this, this one's beating me. Annoyingly, I didn't get to prove what the fault was. I'm sure it's the GPU, well I'm not sure am I? I think it's the GPU, but I don't, uh, I don't really know. Is I didn't hear that 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 chip pop, so uh, I might not have made it any worse. See, maybe I was heating up around the outside, but maybe the inside, maybe the solder's not touched at all on the on the middle of the chip, because I. I think when you're doing it on professional equipment the whole board would be heated up from basically a board heater so the whole board is brought up to temperature all the way along. While all I'm doing really is heating it around the edges. I call it a day at that. I'm going to let it cool down and then we'll just try it one more time just to see. And uh, yeah, that's it really, I don't really know what else to do. So next time you see this now, it will be back together and we'll give it one final try. Now when you're coming to put it back together at the very end, you'll notice that most of the screws are long, but there is one short one. And if you're not sure where that goes, just have a look here and you can see there's an arrow going up here and it says small. So obviously the small one goes into that one there. Okay, so it's all back together. Now I know that this one has been a failure. Well, obviously, I haven't turned it on for the very last time, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a failure. But I have really enjoyed it. And the reason I've enjoyed it is because this thing is really nicely made. So I will definitely be up for doing uh, more than just the ones that I bought. So, for example, I've still got one more to do. But I'm definitely going to be up for doing more. Now, remember I said earlier, so I think went flying up the hoover. I think it is the remains of this little foot here. There was a there was a foot that I ripped earlier, and uh, I've only got half of it now, so that must have been what got sucked up. Okay, so that's all back together, and I didn't have any missing screws, which is nice. Alright, let's give it one final turn on and see what happens. I've cleaned it all up with IPA now as well. So, uh, uh, it's, you know, the board's not going to be a sticky mess if I need to get into this again in the future. Well, I'm just going to get all the leads plugged in. Okay, we're ready to turn on. So the TV's on HDMI 1, turn it on at the back. Still got the red light here. Still turns on. Just going to get a disc as well. Right, nothing's happening on screen there. And we'll go to AV, because I've got that plugged in as well. And that one says no signal, so it doesn't say anything this time about pixelating, but it didn't do that last time. Let me unplug it, the HDMI at the back, and just go straight on AV. I'm just going to do this reset thing. No, that's definitely not working as well as it did before. No, so with all the mucking about, I've definitely made it worse. Because this button doesn't appear to be functioning now. 
I'll turn it off at the back. Right, I'm not getting any pixels or anything now, so all that heating up has made it worse. Still spins the discs up. No, it just comes up with no signal now. So before it tried to come up with things and it used to say 576i, but now it's not doing anything. And the on and off button's not working. So it's time to call a day on this one. So although this was a complete failure, I still enjoyed it because now I definitely feel confident taking these apart again. I, uh, you know, I took every single part of it apart. So if I need one that if I've got one that needs cleaning for example or if there's something else faulty with it now I'm pretty sure this power supply works okay I'm pr pretty sure the blue ray drive works okay now they might be married but I can possibly swap the board out so this, this it's not a waste because I can definitely use this for spares it's a shame that I didn't get anything on the TV but if it is a problem with that GPU, then it would have only been a temporary fix anyway. Now, if you're watching this and you know what the problem is, because maybe you've done many, many of these, and then you knew, you know, it's it's if, if it's obvious to you what the problem is, please add it down to the comments, because possibly I might be able to revisit this in the future. Now, maybe I have made it much worse. I, uh, I really don't know. Maybe, for example, I might have mucked up the CPU now. But, or maybe the problem wasn't with those two chips at all, and maybe by me heating them up, I've ruined it. But, if you know, add it down to the comments, and then it will not only help me out, but it will help other people out as well. So I've still got a third one of these to do, and hopefully on that one I might have more luck. And I'm looking forward to doing that one, so I think that will probably be a video out very shortly after this one. So still, if you like this one, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.